So do we want to do like a quick rundown?
targets tattooed between our eyes. Looking for a better way to get up out of bed instead of getting on the internet and checking a new hit. Get up, first shot, come strut walking. A little bit of humble, a little bit of cautious. Somewhere between like Rocky and Cosby's for the game. Nope, nope, y'all can't copy up. Yeah. Glad, moonwalking. And this here is our party. My posse's been on Broadway, and we did it all way. Chrome music, I shed my skin and put my bones into everything I record to it. And yeah, I'm on. Let that stage light go and shine on down. Got that Bob Barker suit game and Plinko in my style. Money, stay on my craft and stick around for those pounds. But I do that to pass the torch and put on for my town. Trust me, on my I N D E P E N D E N T. This hustling, chasing dreams since I was 14 with the four track busting. Halfway across that city with the back, 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 crush it. Labels out here, now they can't tell me nothing. We give that to the people, spread it across the country. Labels out here, now they can't tell me nothing. We give it to the people, spread it across the country. Here we go back, this is the moment, tonight is the night. We'll fight till it's over, so we put our hands up like the ceiling can't hold us. Like the ceiling can't hold us. Here we go back, this is the moment, tonight is the night. We'll fight till it's over, so we put our hands up like the ceiling can't hold us. Like the ceiling can't hold us. Thank you, 
yeah, I'm so damn grateful. I grew up really wanna go fronts, but that's what you get when Wu Tang raised you. Y'all can't stop me. Go hard like I got an eight away in my heartbeat. And I'm eating at the beat like it gave a little speed to a great white shark on shark. We rock. Time to go off. Gone. Two says goodbye. I got a world to see. And my girl, she wanna see Rome. See, so make you a believer now. Nah, I never ever did it for a throne. That validation comes from giving it back to the people now. Nah, sing this song and it goes like raise those hands. This is our party. We came here to live life like nobody was watching. I got my city right behind me. If I fall, they got me. Learn from that failure, gain humility, and then we keep marching. Can I we said, go back. This is the moment. Tonight is the night. We'll fight till it's over. So we put our hands up like the ceiling can hold us. Like the ceiling can hold us. Go back. This is the moment. Tonight is the night. We'll fight till it's over. So we put our hands up like the ceiling can hold us. Like the ceiling can hold us.
Hello and welcome to week three of the State of the League. My name is Darth Ted and I am your host here today. Join with me is my co-host Zabel. Say hi to the people, Zabel. What's up, boys? How's it going? Uh, and so with me today, we also have Unstream, the jungler of Team Mountain Drake, the man himself, the assassin in the jungle, the one you don't want on your AD carry. How's it going? Hey, pretty good. How about you? Doing well. And last but not least, we have some technical difficulties going on with Gray's Gambit right now. But he is currently the jungler for Brambleback, putting that whole team on his back in the early game and carrying him through some really, really rough laning, laning phases. Uh, we're just going to go on a little hiatus and try to get him back into the call because I think he just got kicked. Apologies for this brief. Unstream is now both Gray's Gambit and Unstream. <laughs> yeah, he can do both of them. So, <laughs> uh, uh, do you know where he is? Uh, he's here. Okay. He just needs another invite, I think. Right. Okay. Uh, if it doesn't let him back in, you might have to remake the call. All right, and we're back. Sorry about that, everyone. Uh, so we also have Grace Gambit, the jungler for Brambleback, right now. How you doing I'm tonight? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just glad for it to be working now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, everyone. So today we have a special jungler edition of the State of the Rec League for you, and we're just going to be doing the same sort of thing, just breezing past the last Sunday's games. And then for next week's games, we're going to try to make it a little more fun and do a around-the-horn type of deal. And then that'll basically consist of 
me just going through each individual matchup, giving two minutes and 30 seconds to everyone to make points for one side and then the other side. So in total, it should be about 20 minutes. And then at the end, we're going to have a how-to jungle by the three junglers that are joining me today. And the last thing is always a Q&A at the end. So yeah, let's just jump into it. So it was able. Bramble versus Mountain. What happened during that game? That was a spicy series. Unfortunately, we have junglers from both teams here um, kind of walk us through it. I thought the games were super close and very entertaining. Um, there were a lot of moments where both teams could have capitalized on different things, and it was kind of a game of inches in both games where they honestly, each team could have won in both games, but they ended up going 1 1. Um, do you guys have any particular thoughts on game one of how that went for you? Oof, game one. <laughs> I, I think I just tried too hard to make plays, and that's kind of what we couldn't do because we kept trying to team fight when we should have just played safe because when there, you have an enemy cannon on the team that could just click R and kill your whole team, you kind of have to play safe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how we were, we were looking at the game. Like We drafted the comp with the condition of team fighting in mind. Um, and so, like, it was literally, we kind of, like, bled a bit in the early game. We made some pretty crucial mistakes. Um, and I'm probably not going to go into them because I don't want other teams to exploit them. But it's things that we're working on. Um, but it, essentially, like, we were able to uh, sort of, like, get things so that once we, we knew that, like, if we were able to hit the team fighting stage of the game while still being relatively even that we were probably just going to win if we just grouped up so it was pretty good <laughs> tell me about your thoughts on that volley bear pick like what were you guys was that something that was oh, man, before or was that something that you just kind of pulled out and draft is that something that we should be watching out for in the record uh, d fox always feels like uh he, he likes he appreciates cc a lot uh so he's actually been looking at a lot of champs that could bring out uh more cc in the mid lane uh, it's just something that like we're trying out, uh, and I think it's pretty useful in the comp because we're, we tend to be, I mean, like when we have like Kennen, we have, uh, you know, me in the jungle. I typically don't play CC heavy tanks. Uh, if we have like a mage mid, ADC, uh, like our only real source of CC is our support. Um, so he's just looking to bring more of that into our team comps. All right. And what about game two, uh, Unstream? Can you tell us a little bit about the decision to swap out uh, Drawfig for Athcor? Uh, it's still pretty early in the season, so the idea when we dra when we recruited both of them was that we were just going to play uh, both of them as our top laners because we were doing like tryouts and they both did very well. Um, so we were hoping that like we would just do one game. Like it's whoever sh if both of them show up at practice, they both get one game. If only one of them shows up at practice, that one person gets both games. Um, and it's just how we're doing things right now. Uh, if things get into like, if we get to playoffs and everything, then definitely we'll think more about. They have very different champion pools, uh, so we'll think more about like what we want to bring in. But right now, it's just about getting them experience. So, by very different champion pools, do you mean that Athcore plays Garen and Drofig plays everything else? <laughs> uh, Ath Athcore has a lot of things that. Um, that he, he has a lot of other picks. It's just that uh, no one's taking away his Garen, so why not play it? Well, to be fair, we just didn't respect the Garen in game two. We're like, he's going to play Garen? We're cool with that. Yeah, we, I thought the Garen was a good matchup into the Scion, so I was pretty happy with just blind picking it. All right, and uh, Gray's Gambit. Yeah. What about game two went better for you? I guess you had less focus on, or less to worry about with the team fighting aspect without that Kennen there. Alright, so when we realized they switched out the top lane, okay, so we're not banning Kennen. That's good to go. Uh, and during the pick ban phase, we were trying to get a counter pick on me, to be honest, because we were trying to figure out should I go a tank jungler with a lot CC or someone that could just hard carry the game. After um, on stream picks in Zao again, I was like, okay, uh, we have a good team cop, grab me J4. And I'm gonna try to gank these lanes like repeatedly and try to make plays. The early game was a little, I, I didn't capitalize on much, but in the team fights though, I always just kind of went for the immobile Jin in every single team fight, and he just I wasn't he wasn't allowed to play the game to be honest. 
So our win condition was make sure Sonic can't do any damage and then just clean up the team after he's dead. Uh, Sasha kept hooking me, hooking me a lot, and that kind of made us win a lot of team fights because after they went all in on me and I wouldn't die, especially in that Baron fight when I had Zonias and I was able to pick off uh, the mid laner and Sonic with uh, EQ ultimate burst. We pretty much won oh. the game and Steam rolled off of that. We actually watched that, and like the only reason why they died literally was because Baron was auto attacking them the whole time. Oh no! <laughs> we saw! Yeah, that's why I was like, okay, after Tony's, I'm gonna go all in, and you guys back me up. And then that's exactly what went down. Like, they, they walked. I I don't know. I, it looked. We watched the replays. It looks like to me that they walked out of the range, but like, did it in a way where like they walked out mid auto attack and then walked back in by the end of the auto attack. And so it just never actually broke the chain. Uh, felt bad. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, after that team fight, it just became like a steamroll after that. Because that one fight just kind of brought us a lot more ahead than we already are. Yeah, and that was a very interesting series to watch. It was super fun. We hope to see more from you guys next week. But we're going to move on right now to game two, which was Infernal versus Sentinels. And we have a member of Infernal right here with us. Zabel, can you talk us through that? Yeah, so I think we won super hard in our draft in game one. Each of us got our signature champion for some reason. I don't know how that happened, but they gave me Kane, Shu, Vladimir, Rovian, uh, I think was on Kaisa. Um, and it just felt super clean. I think they had a jungle Karthus in that game, um, if I'm not mistaken. So... What we tried to do at level one was deny him blue buff because Karthus is absolute ass. He doesn't have blue buff level one. Um, so we just four stacked or five stacked their blue bush and we were able to take it and then apply pressure elsewhere. Um, and it felt pretty clean. As far as game two, draft is a little different, but um, we were able to just rely on our strong landers and I didn't have to really do anything in that game. I think I ganked bot once and got a kill early for the vein, which was a cool pick to see come out. Don't see too much of that in the rec league, but uh, I really just felt like I was farming that game. Like, honestly, I just <laughs> really didn't really have to do anything. So, yeah, in game one, I think that Karthus got two blue buffs the entire game. Oh, and they lost the first one, and it was just miserable to watch. You and did things to that man, and it was not pleasant to watch. I, d I did terrible things to that man. <laughs> Yeah, I think they made a crucial mistake not starting the blue buff, to be honest, and at least protecting it. They, I think uh, Karthus started red buff for some reason. Like, Karthus is like, he needs to start blue buff for him to be able to clear appropriately. So I just think they let you guys do that for free, and that was their downfall. Yeah, and the thing was, they put, they put an early ward in the pixel brush at, like, when minions hit lane, or were about to hit lane, but the thing was, we were already in their blue bush, so the pixel brush didn't even see me after I killed the Gromp and left the jungle, so... It was, uh, felt pretty bad. Oh, yeah, definitely. Especially after that level two gank you did on Nasus, was it? Yeah, he just chunked him in the base, flash. base immediately. He actually yeah. didn't flash, but. What was I, it, Ghost? I don't know. What do you Yeah, did just, uh, base and TP. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that pretty much summed up that series. It was, uh, a little one side towards Infernal, which we're seeing a lot of these days. Hopefully, somebody can step up to that team sometime soon. On stream, looking at you. <laughs> yeah. Um, Get ready. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, tip: don't give Shu Vladimir. It's probably the yeah, pro tip. Yeah, do. it's probably what I do. Pro <laughs> tip. All right. So the next series we have is Ocean versus Scuttle. Yeah, can you talk me through that, Zabel? This series was sick. I absolutely loved the game one. I mean, Scuttle Crab came out without their full roster. They didn't have a Dolma, and they weren't starting 420 Blaze at Nerd 69. Um. The heart and soul. Kind of, look, yeah. The heart and soul of the team. They kind of looked like they were not on the same page for most of that first game. And Ocean coming out with some really strong team play, um, looking like their communication was super on point, and they were just able to transition kills into objectives into towers. And uh, they honestly played game one super clean. And then it kind of flip flopped into the game two, where they had a little bit of an early lead, but they were just bleeding kills in, in skirmishes instead of playing as a team like they did in game one. Um, and just let Scuttle pull ahead. Yeah, game one, it was... I, I don't know, our communication was completely off, and they, that one play where we gave 
the Callista a triple kill early on was just pretty much sealed our fate that game. It was very rough, and we got tilted off of that, and then game one just ended, and we were brought it, able to bring it back for game two, even though it was a, kind of a rough start, and yeah, Aether Fox. Oh, uh, Briggsworth was just yeah. annihilating Aether Fox early game bad. in game two. <laughs> it was a little rough, but yeah, we were able to carry, so. Yeah, the Callista was a cool pick. We don't see too much of that champion um, in the rec league, but definitely one that if you get even one or two kills early, you just snowball so hard. Do you guys have any comments on that game on streamer grace? I mean, overall, I was just pretty impressed with how coordinated Ocean seems. Um, I, I think that just comes like I feel like they have this sort of synergy that is above like all the other teams right now, and so. We can just. I'm. Um, I'm excited to see how they grow in the future. Yeah, Ocean has really stepped it up in the past couple of weeks. Honestly, like they're. You could tell that they're actually practicing and trying to get better. If they played just as well as they did in game one, I feel they could have two old scuttle easily. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, Ocean definitely stepping up to the plate, looking like a team to be feared with their power of friendship. <laughs> so we'll move on to the next series. The Group D, Air versus Gromp. Yikes. Uh, <laughs> oh, what can you say about that? I mean, Gromp is having all these roster problems, and they're just not able to nail down a roster that's working for them. Um, they have a really good mid laner, or had. I don't know if he's on their roster this week. I actually think he's not. But uh, really, he was able to do super well in the lane, but the rest of Gromp's map kind of fell off with the exception of Knife, who... I think we have a clip of later on has some pretty sick plays, but I mean, Gromp's synergy just isn't connecting yet and they haven't been able to figure it out. So um, it was a pretty easy 2-0 for air. I'm just really hoping that this week, Gromp playing Merc Wolves, the brother versus brother rivalry match. Um, hope they can finally lock down the roster that works for them. Yeah. And I mean, not to take away from air, they did play really well that series. So they did. Good gameplay coming out, especially after their 0-2 week against Merc Wolves. So way to bounce back from that. I think I honestly, I don't know. I might have been expecting a 1-1 because I thought Gromp was going to pull it together. And everyone's rooting for you, Gromp. Yeah, I think I, I, think I predicted a 1-1. Um, unfortunately, did not happen. Yeah. yeah I, I was talking to some people... And they they were just saying like in within Gromp there's a lot of like disagreement between like how the different phases of the game should be played and like I don't know what champion should be building and like what role you should have in the, within the team and so like none of like it just sounded like to me that all of a lot of them were just on different pages in turn mm -hmm. like in their games uh, I'm seeing that this week I think they have another roster change Yep No I mean. I'm hoping that they nail it down. I'm excited to see what they can do if uh, they actually if if they work out those communication issues. I thought they were gonna honestly win game two because Knife's Nasus was actually popping Nasus. off. He like one v two the top lane. Uh, honestly, I think what lost in that game was Gillian on the R. He just keep catching out the Cassidy with his like godlike charms, and somehow they're able to pull through. I really thought Gromp was gonna take that game too. Honestly. Yeah, and we've seen Golan do wondrous things in this direct league he's just sometimes just shown up and played like a master tier champion he's i don't know sometimes he can just 1v5 teams and uh, i saw that <laughs> yeah all right and with that that brings us to next week's games where we're going to be playing a little bit of a game here oh. so this is going to be around the rift and we're basically what's going to happen is we're just going to give two minutes and 30 seconds per team. So I'm just going to open up the floor to any comments you guys want to bring up and just score you based on how good of points you bring. Hmm. So let us begin with that one. All right. So first game is going to be Sentinels versus Scuttle. So Unstream, you have the floor. How do Sentinels end up taking this game over Scuttle? Um, well, I think it's going to be pretty difficult. Uh, Scuttle is actually bringing back their their full roster this time. They have um, Adolma, 
up there in the top lane, and uh, he's going to be a pretty unstoppable force. I feel like Endo's been playing really well in a lot of uh, assassin mid laners, and uh, it, like he's he's the type of player where like you give him a little bit and he's just going to take a mile. He like snowballs really hard. You're supposed um, to be arguing for Sentinels right now, not Scuttle. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that, that's the hard part. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, if I if I see anything, it's going to be what Hot Soup Five can do against Aether Fox. Aether Fox is I think a relatively new jungler, uh, and. I'm hoping that Hot Soup 5, um, with his experience, probably can apply more pressure early. If Blue Sentinels can accumulate a significant lead early, I think they could take the game. All right, we're going to cut you off right there. Gray's Gambit, what do you got for us? Honestly, like I don't see Blue Sentinels winning, but I do believe that if Hey Dude, their mid laner, he has looked clean in some occasions. I feel like if they put their resources on Hey Dude, they might be able to come out with a win. But they really have to like watch that mid lane from Aether Fox with the counter jungling. But besides that, it's, it's going to be hard for Blue Sentinels to come up with a win because Scuttle Crab is looking like uh, one of the top tier teams in the Rec League right now, even with Dark Ted usually inting all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's, yeah, that's uh, what I think. Okay. Uh, Zabel, what do you got for us? Come yeah, on. Interestingly, Hey Dude 5 is actually in top lane now. Oh, is he? going to be up against the Dolma. Yeah, they moved Mouse Mazing, their Diamond AD carry, who was actually a jungle main. They moved him to mid lane. Huh. So it's the battle of the old jungle mains in the mid lane. Um, Mouse Mazing is higher elo, so if we go by results-based analysis only, he's going to just shit stomp Endo, who is the most overrated player in the league, <laughs> as the memes say. Uh, I think that Tucker and MK Heat will be a decent bot lane because MK Heat was a top laner, and if he just plays tanky supports, you're doing the same fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hot Soup 5 is a much stronger jungler than Aether Fox. I think we saw in the game last week Aether Fox getting invaded. He can't handle it. If Hot Soup 5 plays a strong invading jungler, he'll be able to just outscale, out CS Aether Fox, and then hopefully their high elo mid lane can win mid and their top laner can just go even. All right. There we go. That is time. So thank you, Zabel, for actually supporting the Sentinels during that time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, uh, reset the clock. And Grace Gambit, since you're at minus 100 points, uh, we're going to go to you first. What, with uh, Bramble versus Ocean? No, uh, Scuttle winning. Scuttle winning? Oh, Scuttle. Honestly, just throw everything into a Doma. He, like, if they don't ban out the Swain or anything like that, I feel... Blue Sentinels can't get past his Swain pick because Adoma Swain is an extremely strong champion. I've seen him like pretty much like 1v5 with that guy. So he has to be banned if they want to come up with a possible win, to be honest. But right. Scuttle is looking like they're probably at 2 0 that series. That's good. Unstream, what happens if they ban Swain? How, how is Scuttle going to win? Honestly, I feel like Adoma just has such a deep champion pool. Even if you ban the Swain, he's going to find another power pick. Um, I, when I look at the lane matchups, I'm seeing Scuttle with top and bot lane priority. So I think that, like, Aether Fox has a lot of uh, room in terms of, like, what how he wants to affect the early game and how he wants Scuttle to snowball. All right. And Zabel? Who? Uh, I mean, Scuttle's going to have to play protect the Aether Fox for a lot of the early game. I mean, if he gets invaded even once they have to make sure they roam over to him, allow him to get the XP he needs and he can should be able to stabilize. He's not a bad jungler by any means, but he just needs a little help in the early game. Adolma is obviously the top lane legend. Uh, I think banning the swing against him is still the right move. He'll pull out something else, but that's a strong team fighting champion. And that's something that Scuttle tends to rely on for him. Um, nobody knows what Endo's going to play except just ban Echo and he'll have to pick something. Um, <laughs> So I think if they can find Endo a champion that he can play that can impact the rest of the map, that will kind of make up for Aether Fox's lack of early pressure. And you can just win bot lane and then try to transition to objectives around the map. I think that's the that's the go for Scuttle Crab. All right. And on stream question for you. How hard do you think bot lane's gonna win? Oh man. Uh, <laughs> I've played with you, I've played against you a lot of times, and I feel like it you you tend to be really really hard to beat <laughs> I, I don't know somehow somehow it's just like you always generate a lead so all right and grace uh how much do you think 
blaze it four twenty. Four twenty blaze the nerd sixty nine is gonna blaze it on Sunday. Oh man, that guy's Nautilus is godlike. Honestly, if I've, I've seen him do some crazy stuff with that champion, honestly, he he's the reason why that bot lane survives. All right, and we're going to just cut it off right there and go on to the next series, which is uh, going to be Bramble versus Ocean. All right, so we're going to do Bramble versus Ocean, reset the clock, and we're going to be talking about Brambleback first. So we're going to start off with Unstream. What did Brambleback, Bramble have over Ocean right now? Um, I mean, I think Brambleback, Brambleback is, Brambleback tends to have the, uh, the rank advantage. Um, we have the top, uh, we, sorry, we have mid lane and, uh, jungle, uh, both showing up there. Um, I think Gray is going to definitely output much more pressure and with mid priority with Pickle Popper, like, I can easily see the two of them just completely overtaking the game early um, and snowballing from there. All right. So, Zabel, how do you think that um, the top lane is going to affect this game? Bramble v. Ocean top lane. Um, yikes. Uh, I think that the top lane is a lane that people tend to ignore a lot. Um, I don't think that a lot of people play around top lane. Um, with the exception of maybe Scuttle Crab, I think that the top lane will impact the game by people ignoring it. <laughs> I really don't think you should. <laughs> All right, move away from top lane. Go to another point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah go for uh, something else. The most important point in this game is the AD carries because Arrow has been looking good, but he's only been looking good on one champion, which is Ezreal. So if Ocean has done their homework and bans that, it's going to be very hard for Brambleback to try to find an AD carry that Arrow can play comfortably. Um, and Jamu has been looking solid as hell. So if they can kind of play around Jamu in the bot lane. Um, Reminder, as as you're arguing for Brambleback right yes, now, not yes. for Ocean. So Brambleback has to shut down Jamu, right? And because who's Jamu, the perfect person to do that, Gray's Gambit? Gray's Gambit is going to have to look for some bot ganks. They've been looking strong in his series so far. But, uh, I mean, Ocean's no team to count out so they're definitely gonna have to bring the heat to bot lane um to try to shut down jamu so he can't carry him all right grace gambit tell me about your bot lane how is paco gonna carry this one? Oh god paco is a king of supports you could put him on any tank engage support and he will run up on the bot lane i've seen him on his signature trick poppy we're practicing some secret pricks on him now that i don't want to disclose you might see it this series it's completely different because his Leona and his Poppy have been getting target banned now. So that's why we've been putting it on um, different champions like the Nautilus and a secret pick that I don't want to disclose just yet. All right, so OP.GG, Colonel Paco, to figure out what that secret pick is. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> All right, and next, uh, Zabel, we're going to come out to you. Now you can tell us how Ocean's going to be able to come back in this series. Okay, so I think the... Mid lane for Ocean is super underestimated. Teal Phoenix is actually a sick player. Um, I think he'll be able to hold his own against Pickle Popper. Pickle Popper has one pick, which is the Zillion. So I think if they can just get him off the Zillion or maybe even the Ari, um, Phoenix will be able to shut him down. And importantly, the bot lane, like I touched on earlier with Jamu, he has looked so strong on some of these carries when his team actually peels for him. So if Ocean can not bleed too many early kills across the map and just allow Jamu to scale while going even mid and top, they should be able to pull out a win on the back of Jamu's 80 carry. All right, on stream, talk to me about this game. What do you think Ocean's going to be able to do? How does the power of friendship overcome the Brambleback? Well, um, from what I've seen, I feel like uh, Ocean Drake's probably strongest point is like everyone else has pointed out. It has been the bot lane. Um, I think... You know, Colonel Paco, I think he's a great player, but from my experience, his he definitely has, like, two champs that he's really strong at, um, which are Poppy and Leona, and everything else is, like, yeah, it's pretty manageable. Um, I think if we were able to, like, if, if Ocean's able to take away those picks from the bot lane, they, I think they definitely win um, the bot lane there, and if they can make it into the mid game 
and into the late game, I think Ocean just has a lot more synergy than Bramble right now. Um, like having played against them, Bramble's team fighting and mid game skirmishes seem at times can be a little disjointed and uh, not super coordinated. And Ocean, on the other hand, they all seem to be on the same page. They're working well together. So I'm expecting that if if we see them make it into the uh, mid game, that that Ocean's gonna just sweep the sweep the game by storm. <laughs> all right, in Grace Gambit, last point. How do you think Ocean's jungler is going to be able to stomp you? Oh no way! It's it's, it's not gonna happen. There's no way. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> points for Graze. All right, what else you got? How is Ocean gonna come back? And in the regards of Ocean, as everyone has been has been saying, bot lane focus is probably the plan here because J Moon has been looking good. So I'll probably be looking at mid and bot most of my series in that in those two games we play because mid lane I was I'm always gonna gank Pickle Pocker. He's my boy. If he gets fed, he could carry the game easy. With bot lane, as long as Arrow Fox survives, and then if we get him on his like signature champs, I feel like it'll be a good series either way. All right, and we're gonna cut it off right there. And the next series we're gonna be talking about is Infernal versus Mountain. Oof. So great, we're actually just gonna start out with you on that one. Oh, we're gonna well, go easier and talk about Infernal first. So, uh, just what do you think? How is Infernal gonna take this game? I, it's, Inferno has been looking really strong lately, to be honest. Um, I've Especially with Shu in the mid lane and then my rival jungler <laughs> on the other <laughs> side. Um, I, I, if, if Inferno keeps doing what they're doing, they're probably going to 2-0 the series. Like, don't get me wrong, Mountain is a good team. If they if they able to maybe get unstream and the jungle be more a little proactive, Honestly, I uh, keep up against Infernal Jungler. I feel like mainly counter ganking Sado, They, I feel like they have a chance, but if they don't have their eyes set on him, Infernal can steamroll the game easily. All right, Zabel, what are you going to be doing to destroy Mountain this weekend? To destroy Mountain? Well, the first step is uh, tilting Sonic, so that's goal oh, yeah. number one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> take him off of some comfort picks and then just punish him super hard. Um, their bot lane has shown in some of their games some life, but in other games, the positioning has been super off because their tank line plays too far back. Um, and if we can punish their positioning in team fights and just burst down their carries before their tanks actually position how they should be, um, we should be able to take the series. I'm really looking to the bot lane matchup, though, because Sonic is a really good player, so we have to shut him down early to get going, and then I'm just hoping I can make unstream's life not fun in that game he won't get to play league of legends so just invade his jungle counter gank all his lanes and then go for the gg all right and unstream how not fun is your sunday going to be playing against him? <laughs> i mean i'm not worried at all i we played a few scrims and every time zabel's tried to invade me we just killed him over and over again so <laughs> if you want to come in feel free to come in uh, just feed us a few free kills. I don't mind at all. <laughs> all right, well, we'll give you a couple of points for that because Zabel's installing fal false confidence in you. Okay, continue. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I I think Zabel identified kind of where where the key uh, lane is going to be, which is the bot lane. Um, I think Shu and Defox. Um, Shu's a great player, but I also think Defox is really strong as well. Um, and I think that the two of them are probably going to be a pretty um well it, two of them are going to be a pretty good matchup uh, and interesting to watch um and like bot with our bot lane i think that uh if 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 we're playing like at our peak um all right i'm gonna i'm gonna have to cut you off right there sorry the time okay. is up but i will actually let you continue that statement right after this um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. All right, cool. Did the video freeze up, or is it just me? Video? Oh, on stream, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, that's like Sorry about that. Anyways, we're going to cut you off right there, but then let you continue. How do Mountain take this game uh, on stream? Um, well, I'm, I think that uh, our bot lane actually does have an advantage against uh, Rovian. I think he's a great player. Um. Uh, but I think like so Sonic has more experience 
uh, more depth of knowledge when it comes to this. And Sasha is a is a great support player, um, and so I think she's definitely going to be able to help Sonic like snowball this game. Um, and, and yeah. <laughs> when you say great support player, do you mean great thresh player? I mean, hey, if you're not going to ban it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think she's a great Thresh player. Person. Definitely. She's a great support player, a godlike Thresh player. There you, there go. you go. All right, sure. Grace, how does Mountain end up taking this one over Infernal? I right, honestly, if uh, Mountain wants to win this game, I think they need to position a little more around Sonic because I, I saw in my game two versus them, they didn't have much protection for him, especially on a, a mobile champion like Jin. So I feel like if they put more resources into Sonic and give him better peeling, he'll be able do his clutch plays and be able to carry the game all right cool and we are hearing from the crowd that mountain ends up winning easily Zabel, tell me how this is done uh for mountain to win this game i think they're just gonna have to somehow get a sixth player in the map uh, <laughs> 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 no i'm just kidding um mountain is definitely strong we definitely don't count them out we don't underestimate anybody except for gromp um mountain is looking pretty good the games against bramble were a little bit sloppy so i'm thinking if they can clean it up and focus around sonic um they definitely have a chance to win this game if sonic can get ahead he's definitely a seasoned eighty carry higher elo player so if they can play around him and their tank lines actually are tank lines then they should be able to pull a win out and we keep hearing that sonic 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 so unstream do you think there's any way for sonic not to be the carry maybe uh, Athcore or Drofig could carry from the top lane, like the first game against Bramble? Um, Athcore has this, like, always has this opportunity to just completely snowball off of uh, um, just the Garen pick. I mean, we saw him against uh, Air Drake, and, like, both games, he was just... I, I didn't even, like, touch top lane. He was generating these crazy leads the entire time. Um, so, I think, you know, getting him on a comfort champ he can do really, really well because uh, he, he lanes really well. Um, with Drofig, he's a great team fighter and uh, definitely plays some more of those like carry type top laners. Um, so we can see like if he if we can get an early lead there, we I mean, you know, Mr. Neat has like three champions, so <laughs> and they're all tanks. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so. and we're gonna switch over to the last series on the line, which is gonna be Merc Wolves versus Gromp. Oh, yeah. Gambit, oh can man! You... Yeah, we're gonna give you the easy one to start out with. Merc Wolves first. Coming to you, Grace. Oh me? All right. Uh, let me think about this because Gromp has been looking just hasn't been looking that good. So honestly, I feel like, we're, especially with a player like Shadow Vold, Merc Wolves could definitely come out on top easily against Gromp because they've been looking very weak in this series. All right, and. What do you think he's going to be playing? What's the, what's he on to say? Is he on mid or top lane this series? Mid lane. Believe mid lane? So. Against Dynamic Killer. Dynamic Killer. Okay. Oh, too bad. I kind of wish I would have saw his Darius top lane again, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I, Shadow Old could pretty much play Soraka mid, and I feel like he'll win that series. He's... <laughs> Don't joke about that. He will do that. No, okay. Gonna, you know what? Here, I, I want to see point for that Shadow Old but... pull out Soraka mid. And win a game. That's it. I'm calling it right now. I mean, he trolled Unstream and I season two uh. going Soraka top, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> Zabel, <laughs> what's going to happen? Who's going to win between your former teammates, the two brothers? My former teammates, the two bros. Um, well, if I'm talking for Merc Wolves to win, um, right. I think that Gallywix is a super strong jungler. They have Tom Nom Noms in the top, who's like a hidden god. So. If you can pull out the hashtag free the Garen in the top lane, uh, it's just going to be all over for Grump. But in all seriousness, I think that the high elo difference in mid and bot lane for Merc Wolves is going to be insurmountable for Dynamic Killer, low elo in the mid lane, and then Chimichanga's uh, jungler, now AD carry in the bot lane to overcome. I mean, even with Frostbeat on support, who's actually a super good player, um, really only plays those mage supports. So unless they're going to put dynamic killer on a tank and put frostbeat on a mage. Um, I don't really think there's a way Grom can overcome Merc Wolves, um skill difference. All right. And on stream last point, what do you think Merc Wolves have over Gromp? Um, like I said, I actually think their jungler is really good as well. 
Um, and Shadow of Old is um, can be a very, very uh, snowball-y player where you, like, give him a small lead and he'll just take over a game completely. Um, their bot lane, too, is pretty good. I know Timberlin uh, makes a lot of... is. I feel like he's a very like playmaking support. Um, paired with Quaz, it's just like it's they're a really great combo together. Uh, Quaz being probably one of the more consistent AD carries uh, in this in the rec league. All right, and with that, we're gonna swap it over to Gromp versus Merc Wolves. See how Gromp can end up coming back in this. Who wants to take first stab at this one? I'll take first stab at it. Um, who? How Gromp can come back? Well, Knife is looking fucking sick, so. If they can get Knife on a pick, he can carry on like the Nasus or the Kled, and he can just 1v2 the enemy team when they try to gank him again, um, and actually transition his lead into rotating properly because he has struggled with that. I think that Gromp's going to look pretty strong. There's a lot of unknown factors because we haven't really seen Frostbeat play with their team yet. Sweezy's their new player who was support and now he's jungling. So those unknown factors, I think, are in Gromp's favor because Merkwolves is going to have little to no research on what Gromp could maybe pull out. Um, so if they can play safe in the mid lane, not not let Dynamic Killer get snowballed on by Shadow of Old, and then uh, pull out some spicy picks in the supporter jungle, I think Gromp can actually surprise some people with a win. All right, Grace Gambit, what does Gromp have to do to win against Merc Wolves? Quick question, is Horizon playing this series? No. No? Okay. So, if that's the case, I would put all my money on Knife. He's been looking very good on the Gnosis. If I feel like if they pick that up and play more around let Gnosis split push all game and just survive with your other lanes, he could probably single hair handily carry the lane. Also, I don't know about Jimmy on ADC now. I feel like he was a better jungler for the team. But if he keep, if he stays consistent with that Jigs pick, I think they will have a shot to take the game, but they have to play extremely well for them to even take a win from the other team. All right, on stream, uh, take it away. I do want to hear a little bit about my boy Frostbeat, though, coming back in the support role. Yeah, I mean, I think Frostbeat is probably like one of the best supports. I was, I remember last season just being terrified about playing against him. Uh, that, and I think Chimmy has some really spicy picks and. Uh, I, I think the two of them, uh, if they can get their, if they can get their, if they get picks that they like, uh, I can see them actually taking over that bot lane, because um, they, they're, I, I play with them a little bit. Their play style is pretty different compared to most other lanes. So I, I think uh, if Merc Wolves isn't fully prepared, they, they might be caught by surprise. Uh, again, Knife is also looking really good, and I see him top lane like everyone else mentioned. I. I'm really interested to see how Sweezy does in the jungle. All right. And one last question for you all. Are we going to see an Uder ADC this week? Oh, I hope so. They're going to ban <laughs> it. They're going to respect ban it, even though he's not juggling. They're just going to meme ban it. Oh, no. If they don't ban it, you're going to see it in a bot lane easy. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, if they throw a ban at it, I feel like it's a little bit of a waste of a ban, but... You got to send a message. <laughs> send a message. All right. And... That is all for us from Around the Rift. Thank you, everybody, for playing. On stream, you ended up with 18 points that don't actually matter. Oh, my entire thing just cut out. Well, we're going to go back to that whole technical difficulties thing, and we'll be right back in a moment. <laughs> Fucking rip. Yeah. Hey, we're still on stream though. <laughs> no, you just kicked everybody. <laughs> uh, uh, no, it, the session just ended on me. The okay. Thing closed it out. Yeah, so we're just gonna go into this technical difficulty sort of realm and try to grab on stream into Discord when we can. Might as well continue this way, I guess. Yeah.
Hey, I'm, I'm back. back. Hey. Uh, we did a little bit of a roulette there, just a little bit of a musical chairs. People are out of order. I'll fix that in a second. <laughs> Sorry, everybody, for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was split across all four screens at one point, wasn't I? That's pretty funny. Uh, never mind. Anywho, we're going to be going on to the next session of the topic, which is what everyone is here for. The How to Jungle with Zabel as the host. Or... Er, yeah, sorry. Unstream. Below me. Not Zabel to the right. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Zabel, can you talk us through a uh, couple of different of the pathing options for early game junglers? Okay, so the first point we want to touch on is aggressive pathing. Um, this is something where you look to create pressure on the map by counter jungling, invading, and early ganks. Um, when we talk about vertical versus horizontal jungling uh, a lot of the times the vertical jungle which we've seen a lot of in the rec league is going to be taking your buff and then an enemy buff or then an enemy buff and your buff vice versa um and we saw that in our game versus sentinels where we actually were able to take an early blue buff on the karthus which we touched on and then transition that into some early pressure on the lane on the nasus all right um, and we have a clip for that, I believe, right? Yes. All right. I'm going to start playing it right now. Bots Kane coming out of the jungle, but Hatsu 5 is just going to walk right over there now. And he's going to get spot out on this ward. Bots Kane is looking. Let's see what happens here. Do they leave? Yeah, so he didn't see me on the ward there. I saw him running into the jungle, so I just pulled the Gromp up. Um... And then was able to go in the top lane and chunk Nasus, and he actually has the base after that. So super unfortunate for uh, Hot Soup not able to spot me out there. Clever. All right, we were actually talking about that play earlier. So the whole decision of going for the blue buff to take away from Karthus early on, what would you have done if you were on the other side of that? What should the Karthus have done to prevent it you from stealing the blue? I mean, like Gray said, I would have just started on a blue buff as Karthus, or at least had a ward actually on the buff and not just warding around the buff a little too late because they didn't anticipate us five stacking the blue bush from level one from the get go. Um, so if you are that jungler who knows you're going to have to rely on blue buff, definitely try to have a little more control over your buff as opposed to just assuming they're not going to take it. All right. And that has to touch into a little bit of communication between the jungler and the top lane, because if you do decide to go down there, then at least your Nasus has to watch over to make sure you don't start there. Yeah, like in that situation, the top laner definitely has to be watching your entrance at least, um, if not just dropping a ward and then trying to get some cheese in lane. But a uh, little miscommunication there by Sentinels <laughs> allowed us to secure that. All right, so... How does a jungler, like, how would the Karthus have decided to go for vertical jungling if, without any information that you were there? Uh, I don't think you can vertically jungle on Karthus as the champion. Uh, I think it's, you can't really invade on Karthus until you have at least, like, level, and even against some champions, you can't invade them ever because they'll just one v one you every time. So for Karthus, I think the fact that you can't vertical jungle means you have to start your blue buff. Um, if you're on blue side of the map because your bot lane can protect your red um, and the blue is the weaker side for your team then. So if you don't start blue, if the enemy jungler is doing the right thing, he's just going to take it. All right. So on stream, on a champion like Xin Zhao that you played, I think, twice last week, how would you know when to invade onto the enemy jungler in the early game? Um, I The nice thing was that uh, he, was, he ganked level two, so he showed top. Uh, it was pretty clear that, um, you know, as soon as he was there and I, I showed bottom, it was just pretty obvious from there that we were both going to be vertical jungling. Um, I I went ahead and, like, I think a lot of it is just being able to see where the enemy jungler is and also kind of, like, understand that, like, where you're starting kind of says, like, if you want to avoid vertical jungling, if I wanted to avoid vertical jungling, what I would have done is... Um, 
I would have just started my blue buff and matched Gray because he was going to start red buff as J4, right? Um, and just even watching it in general, like if you don't know where they're starting for sure in the beginning, uh, watch w like when their laners come in, right? And tip because typically they'll get a leash, and then you can put. Um, sorry, I'm flubbing. Uh, like if you know that they're cross mapping you, you can reliably predict that they are um, going to try to go for an invade, at which point you can go for yours. Tell you, It's important to communicate to that side of the map too that you're going to do that so they, they can gain priority uh, so that they can be the first ones to come to if the situation is that he decided not to and actually just comes to the other side uh, down to meet you in whatever side of the jungle you're in. All right, fair enough. And so uh, what happens if they say your enemy starts top side, you start bot side, and then your lanes can't gain priority? How do you answer that? Um, I mean, if none of your lanes can gain priority, uh, he's just going to have to pretty much seed some jungle, you know, get some vision and see how much he's taking. Uh, probably get so some scuttle control. Um, if, I would probably try to put some wards down and spot him out in your jungle first, and then you can start working your way across the map. But you have to make sure that, that the enemy jungler is there. Uh, and try to take some paths where maybe you don't they don't have good vision of you and so you can sneak a few camps away um or just look to gank but um like if if the if you have priority like on the other side of the map just tell that laner to come and kill the ju invading jungler um <laughs> so is that simple you just kill him <laughs> yeah <laughs> just kill him all right, and Gray's Gambit. So, Unstream was talking about a little bit about the level one buff going into a gank. Do you think that's the new meta? Um, honestly, it just depends on your play style. I see there's four different play styles in the trunk, uh, in the jungle. Number one being the cheeser. That being is you go straight into your buff, and then especially this is if you're on an aggressive champion like Zin Zhao, Camille, or even Pantheon. What you want to do is go, if you start red side, go start red side and look for a level 2 gank, either on mid, top lane, or even bot lane. Get a flash, get a kill, no matter what you got to do. Right after that, you're not looking to farm. You're looking to go into the next, maybe get a scuttle and go right into the next lane, because you want to create as much pressure as you can. And with that, in that position, you're mainly looking to snowball your lanes and provide more success for your laners. Then there's other then there's other math method with tank junglers like Sejuani. Let's even throw in Maokai for no reason. With that way, you mainly want to farm. Let's say do a full clear and always look to gank your lanes. But if you're gonna gank, you have to make it a successful one because with tank junglers like a Sejuani, if you fail gank, it just gives the enemy jungler just free roam to go in your jungle, take some camps, or even counter gank. Because as a tank jungler, you need to make it a successful one or you lose out entirely. So it really depends on the play style of the jungler you're playing. Well, would it be Zen Zhao, you want to play on the early game? Always killing your enemy jungler, always ganking lanes, or if it's a tank jungler, you want to farm up, and if you do gank, make sure it's a successful one, or you're just pretty much wasting your time in that format. All right, and we actually have a... That's a good segue into our next clip, which is from the Bramble vs. Mountain game. I think... We'll just start the clip right now if you want to talk us through it, Zabel. I hate people that do yeah, that. Right. Do that. Flash here, man, just um, we see on stream here Zinjiao, level two. taking the just red and then doing exactly what we so talked easy. about, just <laughs> pathing towards mid lane to um, with that volley bear. The CC in, setup is huge, just and he's able to just come in early and burn the flash, which is super big for having your Zinjiao and volley bear CC stack. Having the Ori without flash is very repeat bankable. Yeah, and I mean, Oriana without flash was super easy to get on top of, and unfortunately, uh, wait, do we have a clip of that? The next one where D Fox and Pickle Popper go at it again. Oh, for the dive, yeah, let's play uh, that oh, one next. I, I remember yeah. that, <laughs> yeah. So, we're gonna go straight into this one, and this is more of on the importance of how to counter gank. But it just fits into the whole uh, timing of things. So this is exactly after, um, a couple minutes after that first clip we just showed. CS thing here, but Unstream coming back into the mid lane, getting it up. 
knockup going in, the flip coming back out, pushing it back in. So the, the issue right here is Defox steps in, takes the turret shot, and Grace Gambit had a really, really nice counter gank onto uh, Unstream. Sorry, you're both in the chat. <laughs> Made it a little awkward. That's fine. Yeah, you're good. Um, yeah, I think actually um, I like saw Gray like in his jungle right before we Oh, you we did. did. <laughs> he probably saw me too. That's that's why he like came right away. Um, and so we were it, for for us it was a bit of a misplay on our end uh, because as soon as Rexai came in um, and coming. like Ori was pretty much out, I was like, I went ahead and was like saying like we should go on the Rexai, uh, and D Fox like stayed on the Ori and like just went a little too far with the tower dive, um, and like just took that unfortunate tower like he. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> shot. Um, I think if we'd actually both, like, I think we win the 2v2 pretty hard, and if we just both turn on the right side there, we probably could have won that too. Um, but yeah, it was just. It's unfortunate. <laughs> Yeah, uh, in my state, I knew after Oriana blew her flash, I knew I was gonna hang her. I had to hang around there because obviously playing against the Zenzal, you know he's gonna want to go for the lane without a flash. So I was just mainly just about just gonna do my caps around her positioning. But this, you just kind of showed in my jungle, and I just saw you walking right past me, like they're coming, and all I had to do was turn one, <laughs> and then that turn dive was that was that was something else. <laughs> oh, I uh, I thought I could. I, I did some quick maths and uh, thought I could burst the Ori and make a hyphy play. Uh, <laughs> did it go very well? I have to admit that like that's probably one of my bigger weaknesses. Where if I see something where I'm like, "Ooh, I can make a really cool play here," I'm like probably gonna go for it, even if it's a really bad idea. Like I knew it was a bad idea before I did it. <laughs> I just thought it'd be fun. Like, <laughs> so we're definitely gonna see a lease in unstream, right? Sometime oh, soon. I <laughs> oh, can't wait to see that. <laughs> All right, and so one thing I also wanted to ask you guys is how important do you think it is to play some unique junglers that can path very interestingly, like the Kane or Rek'Sai, the ones that can kind of get over random walls that no other jungler can really do? Don't forget about Zach. Yes, like, Zach he's too. One of those junglers that will pop out from nowhere. Like you, that, it's yeah. so hard to ward against Zach, honestly. Yeah, I think those junglers are sick because you can get – like the traditional wards people place in the bot lane and the mid lane won't see those junglers. I mean, with Kane, he has that little um, animation that comes up when he's near you on the wall. You can see if he's like close by, but at that point, it's usually too late and you're going to have to um, flash out. Or, I mean, if you're mobile, you can probably get out. But um, especially ganking bot lane with champions like that is so easy because there's so many walls and hard places for bot to ward. So. Playing champions like that, if you want to punish bot lane, is definitely the go-to. And speaking of ganking bot lane, that leads us into our next clip. Uh, Zabel, this is the one of your gank, if you want to talk us through it. Okay. All right, I'm going to play it right now. A full mini So I saw the bot lane space. super pushed up. Zash is able to get a good flash in, and then Tucker flashes out, but then gets hooked right back in. Um, and then, thankfully, Rovian's able to just flash out, and then we can just clean up now. It's amazing. Um... And that's just all on the back of that unique pathing that you talked about with being able to come through the wall there in a place that you're not going to expect because they had a ward in the bush on the side. Um, but that wasn't able to see me coming through the wall there. Fortunately, we were able to pick up the double kill uh, and then transition that into dragon, which is something else that's important to do if you get priority on the side of the map, take an objective after. Yeah, and objectives definitely are key. So... I guess, when do you know when to go for a dragon versus when to go for getting some of that turret plating and getting gold into your pockets? Uh, well, if it's an ocean drake, I'm always going to take it early because it's just so fucking strong early game, like the regen for all your lanes. Um, taking that one objective just allows even your losing lanes to play safer and just not get poked out and harassed out of lane. Um, if it's like a cloud drake or... Honestly, just a cloud drake, because I always want to take mountain and infernal early. Um, just go for plating if it's cloud. All right. And uh, Grace Gambit, what do you think your one of your favorite champions would be for counter ganking? Counter ganking? Ooh. Out of all my options, I'm going to say between Zenzao and Rek'Sai, honestly. I feel like they're one of the best counter gankers. 
Rex side being because he just tunnels in, knocks you up, and you pretty much win the fight after that. And Zin Zhao being such a high DPS champion, you normally get a win out with between any jungler, even Lee Sin, to be honest. All right. And so, Unstream, uh, same question for you. Which junglers do you think are the best at counter ganking? Uh, if I had to pick one, I'd have to give a shout out to my uh, my uh, always banned Nocturne. Oh, Nocturne. Uh, <laughs> it is such a good uh, counter ganking tool because you don't even have to be like close to the lane. <laughs> With your ult, you can just like, oh, they're ganking mid. I'll, I'll just press R and go there. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's yeah, you true, that's so true. much damage too that like you could probably get there, kill someone instantly, and like they had a two v one, and then suddenly it's a two v one against them. Like, it's that's oh, great. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, so I guess the next question we're going to talk about is basically diving. Uh, there's got to be a lot of coordination between you and whatever lane you're going to be doing this with. So can you, uh, I guess, Abel, can you talk us through a little bit of how to perform a successful dive and how do you not get counter ganked in the middle of it? How to perform a successful dive? Well, to perform a successful dive, you need actually have champions that can dive. Um, so like Kane's one that comes to mind for me personally and Pantheon, Kane can just dodge the tower damage and Pantheon's able to block the tower damage. So. If you have a jungler or even a mid laner who can juggle the tower aggro effectively, especially in the early game when you're going to be dying to the tower more often, um, you want to go for dives. And if you're diving into a champion that can CC one or multiple people under tower, you usually don't want to dive unless they're oom. Um, uh, and I think in some of these games that we had clips for, um, we saw some unsuccessful dives, unfortunately. But uh, that's just sometimes a little greed of trying to be hype and then uh, end up taking tower shots and getting punished. So, I mean, the most important thing if you're going to dive is to know where the enemy jungler is so you don't just get counter ganked. And uh, the one you're talking about, is that the Gromp versus Air clip? Yeah, yeah, we have a clip of that actually in the Gromp versus Air game. Yeah, I'm going to play that right now. You can start talking through it if you want. <coughs> uh, try to hit right, level 6, see. that way you can do it. So, they had the Taco come in on the Sejuani for the initial gank and then. Gromp ends up diving in and Dynamic Killer just ults onto the Ari under tower. I mean, he gets first blood, but then they didn't respect the fact that Shen can ult in there um, and just got double killed. So knowing the champions on the map, like if there's a Shen in the game, he's obviously going to ult to whoever you're diving. So it's going to make it extremely hard for you to get a maximum value play. Right, right. So what are some of the better dive champions than Unstream? Um... I think anyone that can really like juggle the uh, tower um, shots is is going to be a good choice when you're diving. Um, so I see in the chat someone's mentioning Elise. She's pretty good yeah. because she can just repel. Uh, Kane is also really good. Uh, I think Master Yi uh, is a really good tower diver, assuming that like your Q actually works the way it should. Um, and I. It's not played anymore in the jungle, but back when it was, I used to like fizz a lot for the <laughs> tower dives. I'm with you on that one. I really want to see some fizz jungle come back. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna move back toward or away from the more. Oh, oh sorry. One note Great. though, uh, you did forget about Kindred. She's actually really good at turret diving, just oh, because yeah, of her ultimate. Right. She goes in, takes out the kill, and then just ults and gets her team out to safety. Yeah, but we. Really haven't seen much Kindred at all in the Rocket Oh, League. who knows? I might bring it up. <laughs> I know, <laughs> Unstream, you played a little bit of that. Do you think we're going to see it this week? Um, I don't know. I mean, I've played her recently, and I feel like in this meta, she's not terribly strong. But I haven't put a ton of games into her this season, so it's really hard for me to tell. Right. And a lot of the junglers we have been seeing are very strong at the level two, taking the scuttle crab and then going for immediate ganks, which you all have played. But I do want to touch on going to some more tanky junglers on the other side of that. Uh, the two we really have been seeing are the Sejuani and the Ramas. So on stream, since you played the Ramas, can you tell us why these two champions are, I guess, more picked than any of the other tank junglers? Um, I think Ramis actually. I, I think Ramis and Sejuani. They both have a pretty strong clear. 
Um, Ra Ramus with like some of the camps are just like it's it's crazy. It's like stupid fast. Like against Raptors, like it's like two seconds and you've taken the camp. And Sejuani now with her reworked E, uh, constantly being able to proc that stun just means that like your clear is super healthy and it's really fast too because it brings a lot of extra damage. Uh, so both of those like. It's hard to counter jungle against both of those because like half the time if you go into their jungle at all, the camps are already all gone. Like they don't leave much for the enemy to take if you're farming well. And like they also have pretty good gank tools too. So like they put a lot of pressure out there and bring a lot of CC early. So Alright. So Grace, what other tank champions do you think we're gonna be seeing in the jungle? Other First, than Zach, because we, we we did uh, know the Zach was touched on. Because that, that's who I'm always going to prioritize, I said, Ronnie or Zach. But besides that, honestly, Scar, Skarner was just buffed this patch. He might be start look, be coming in the jungle now because his new Spire mechanic, that you don't know when he takes it, so you can't really tell where he is on the map. And plus, if you try to counter jungler a Skarner and he's there, you're going to lose that matchup, like 100% of the time. So with a, Scar, a tank jungler like Skarner, also goes in with Predator, goes in, ults, enemy AD carry, mid laner, whatever, it's usually a guaranteed kill if they don't have a QSS. Right. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the Skarner buffs that just came into play? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what they did was um, they changed his spires. So before, you could see it on the minimap, and every time, uh, so let's say you had a spire top lane, and then out of nowhere, you could see it switch. Then you know Skarner's in that position, or an enemy, another enemy. But now they changed it where you can't see it on the minimap, mini -map, so no matter where he is, you don't know where he is technically. And also, they moved it where he could take Krugs extremely easily and fast. A lot. So you have the Spire like in the middle of the jungle, and he could take all three camps extremely quickly. So he may, brings them out more in the enemy jungler position, or even ganking more. All right. And I guess, uh, Zabel, we're going to move on to less tank and a little more fighter champions, some of the bruisers. Do you think we're going to be seeing more champions like Vi or Jax come out? Uh, personally, I love playing those champions. I think that they're very strong and also super fun. Um, the assassin junglers are really fun, but tend to be super squishy and feast or famine. And the tank junglers, to me, are not fun. <laughs> um, so the bruiser junglers kind of fit both of those roles, in my opinion. Um, with a champion like Vi, has a lot of passive shielding, um, can end up getting pretty tanky, but also do a shit ton of damage. So. I think those kind of picks are really good if you are trying to play two roles within your team. Um, and personally, I think that Jack's jungle, haven't seen it too much in the rec league, I don't think, but I think it's really good and I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, some people pull it out. Yeah, I played it once. Yeah, I think that was maybe the only time we saw it actually. Pretty sure it went well for you, right? Oh yeah, yeah, we won. <laughs> but... <laughs> I think Endo played it against us. You know, yeah. that's my team. I should know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Haven't seen a lot of it, but it's, it's uh, possible. Yeah, no, Endo definitely did play it against you. Right. I don't uh, know I, how I feel about Jax jungle now, especially with the Conquer nerfs, because Conquer on Jax was busted, but now Conquer is kind of... Mm, it's it's not worth it anymore. So it might switch to Hail Blades. That might ooh. be a thing. Yeah, it could be good. All right, and I guess the next topic we had going for is basically uh, path passive pathing. So if you're a tank jungler going into an assassin or a bruiser matchup and you can't actually take the fights, how do you control vision? How do you find out where the enemy jungler is starting and stay away from them, Grace? It's about warding entrances, always entrances. Um, you want, especially in the early game, I always say ward the scuttle area because majority of the time a jungler is gonna go for a scuttle and then you know exactly where he is so you could if you're playing a jungler like Sejuani and they're playing like let's say an Olaf you want to stay away from that guy because Olaf can run you down as a Sejuani so you want to like full clear your position of the jungle and if you see him invade you just go to his side of the jungle all you need you just kind of want to avoid the enemy jungler for the um, most for the beginning of the game and then just more look for counter ganks honestly but vision is extremely key. Just ward entrances, exits, whatever you got to do. All right. And so, Unstream, in those tank matchups, when you were playing Ramus, how important was it to know where the enemy jungler was actually starting? 
Yeah, I think that's like probably one of like the, the key things because like if you know where they're starting, you can kind of get an idea of what path they're going to take. Um, so like being able to determine where they're starting and sort of adjusting your thing <coughs> to account for that, I think is definitely uh, a crucial part because like I mean if they're if they're if they're starting on the same side, if you can make sure that you start on the same side as them, um, like you can pretty much counteract any invade because in order to really invade where they would find you like where they could steal some camps away from you they'd have to walk to the other side of the map so and usually you'll get i mean obviously you'll just get there first so all right and <laughs> i guess the last topic we we're going to touch on right now is basically how can you actually jungle from behind how, if you are getting Oof. invaded upon, if you're two levels down, died a couple, how do you stay safe? How do you not keep feeding? Come that's, to you, Grace. That's, that's a tough one. That's It's really hard to jungle from behind, especially if the enemy team is consistently going into your jungle, taking camps and warding. At that point, you kind of just have to give up your jungle and just try to make plays with your laners, honestly. Because if you... If you don't know where the enemy is you can't go in your jungle it's 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 too dangerous because you could just walk into a ribbon just way in your bush and just like one shot you, you know, from playing from behind it's it's a lot scarier because you have to you have to play with your laners honestly try to counter dives honestly you want to look for it because they're gonna want it the enemy team's gonna want to turn dive you and you want to be ready for that so and then just get a lead off of that and then once you get stop the bleeding you can start farming again Right. And also vision. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. <laughs> also vision. vision. Pink warts everywhere. <laughs> All right. So, uh, do you, any of you guys have any last comments you want to say to the crowd about jungling? I think um, identifying like the side that you're strong on is pretty important when it comes to uh, passive jungling or playing from behind. Like, if you know that your bot lane has a small lead, or you like. Or, or that at least they have like priority. Like you want to be playing towards that side. Like if top lane is snowballing, their jungler is like super fed. Like going into your top side jungle at that point is like pretty much guaranteeing that like you're going to get caught in there and you're going to die. So like oh, yeah. pick the side. Like figure out what side is stronger for you, and f that is your side that you want to ward up. You want to play in far and try to get like as much farm as you can. All right, really good point. Zabel, did you have anything else? Um, I think the last important thing to touch on is like knowing which lane to gank. Like kind of like what Unstream said, like you don't want to gank a losing lane, in my opinion. Because um, if you gank a losing lane, like we saw a knife with a sick one v two outplay, um, and I think we saw Mister Neat with an outplay like that as well. Um, that if you gank a losing lane, that's just more kills for the enemy laner to get. Uh, if you're weak and your laner is weak, then it's just not going to end well for you. All right, that's definitely something you need to uh, think about before getting into game. <laughs> Very true. This is something you have to decide during champ select. And Grace, uh, do you have any any last points you want to bring up? Yeah, I feel like uh, if you're a jungle, know your champion, know your champion and what he could do in all stages of the game. Because if you're gonna pick something that you're not good with, don't play it, because you're you don't know what you're doing. If you're going to pick a champion that you know what's going to do in all stages of the game, play upon that. Don't do something that it's not going to work well with, let's say, a Pantheon. You have, you have to do what that champion is based on. Like Sejuani, team fighting. Sin Zhao, counter jungling and counter ganking and invading. These are, it's just know your champion and how to play it well. All right. Wise words coming out from Grey's Gambit right there. <laughs> So we're going to open it up to the Q&A session right now. And the first question we actually have is, who do you guys think are the top three junglers in the game? The champions. Oof. We know Nocturne is for Unstream. <laughs> I mean, I personally would have to say, um, right now, Kha'Zix, Kane, and Rek'Sai. I think of the three strongest. I think Kha'Zix is super strong because of his dueling power and um, his scaling in the late game. Um, Kane is strong and Rek'Sai for the same reason for their invading power. And they can kind of hard farm, but also are very strong counter gankers with their unique pathing. 
um, and they both offer untargetable ultimates. Um, and then Kane can swap forms based on how the game's going or based on the copies playing against. Um, that's why they're top three for me. Honestly, I'm gonna have to disagree on the Rek'Sai, especially because of this patch, because the Conqueror uh, fair, nerf fair, fair. hits it way too hard, especially especially Rek'Sai. She only became good because of Gonker and those like minor quality of life buffs. So now I don't think we're gonna see much of her. Who would you put uh, in place of the Rek'Sai? Rek'Sai? Honestly, I'm thinking Zach's looking a lot stronger now, especially if you're rounding a tank meta. It looks it's beginning to shift into tank meta, honestly. If you have a nice hyper carry AD control mage, put a Zach in the jungle, just play it safe, easy, easy game. Fair. Right. I actually think Rexai is still pretty strong, honestly. Uh, she is go uh, she is going to be weaker though, like by she, a lot. So like I think Rexai always had a lot of really early power. Um, I think like the issues that like I think like the Conqueror changes <coughs> when they first went through sort of like amplified that power a lot. And so people were like trying her out more and realizing that she's really strong. I think that now that they kind of like toned down, like brought back Conqueror a little bit, like people are still, I think people are still going to find a lot of success on Rek'Sai if they keep that same playstyle. She's just not going to be like crazy OP broken like she was last patch. But I think she's still going to be really impactful early. Um, I think like if I was to put anyone else up there, I would put J4. Oh yeah. Uh, I oh, think he's like yeah. crazy strong oh, right yeah. now. And Sejuani we forgot too. Sejuani's definitely up there. Oh, everyone knows about Sejuani. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's right. a given. One more champ on stream. Um Oh man. I mean yeah, I think uh, I, I would probably actually give it to Sejuani. I think that her clear right now is pretty good. Um, I, I think <coughs> if you want to play like a more teamfight-oriented comp, she's definitely what you want to be looking to pick up. Uh, I think the only reason why you would not pick her is just because she doesn't have as much pressure early as the other top-tier junglers do right now. So you're giving up... But you have like a lot more impact when it comes to mid and late game. All right. And so the next question we have is, what do you guys think of the Vi changes? Hmm. I like it. You want to just read yours? <laughs> I mean, I, I was I I was like a Vi main for a while, and so like I was excited about the buffs when they mentioned it, and liked a few of the changes they were like throwing around, and then they decided to go with absolutely none of them. <laughs> uh, I, for me. It's a power shift, right? Like the alt changes are interesting and you're just gonna have to play around that a little differently. I don't like how she got like a really tiny attack speed nerf. Uh, and I don't think the shielding is going to be as impactful in team fighting as you think. Like you can proc, if you proc shield, I was doing the math and like, you know, it's, it's a plus 5% of your max health. So I guess if you build tankier, but then you're losing a lot of damage, she lost like, Point five total AD in her combo, um, and like she, she's taking like um, like like she's built. They like designed her on this idea that like she can proc W more than once and then have a lower cooldown shield. But like I don't think that if the team is playing well, that you're as that you as Vi are going to be able to stand there just like punching a champion without them yeah. moving. You get your one right. combo and that's kind of it for you on yeah. Vi. I mean, that's how it feels yeah. sometimes. So you might have to try to like experimenting with like maybe like Aftershock Vi or like tankier, like less bruiser and no Triforce, just Aftershock and like dead mans and like use your shield procs more. Honestly, I, I tried a new build on her, starting Cinder Hulk and then Triforce into Sterix. It feels pretty nice. Or even a Phantom Dancer. Oh yeah. For the lifeline yeah it's better it gives her more healing more tankiness and it makes up for the damage yeah and she can crit on her e now so um with the phantom dancer that's pretty dirty <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it was nasty dude <laughs> that's actually really funny i i would really like to see that all right so the next question we have is um do you guys think we're gonna see kale in the jungle at all this week <sighs> i hope not it has potential, honestly, yeah. but it, it it's just she's so weak early game that if you go against an aggressive jungler, you're not going to have fun. Right. 
Yeah, it'd be a good like counter pick. Like if you see they didn't pick an aggressive jungler and you feel like you want to play Kale jungle, go for it. But if you're All picking right. that when you haven't seen the jungler, they're gonna pick like Rek'Sai, Olaf, Lee Sin Jin Zhao, and just ruin your day. Mm -hmm. Do you think it could be a good counter to say like a Nocturne? Kale? Mm. I think Nocturne's a pretty strong invader too. Um like surprisingly. A lot of people think he's like a level six jungler, but I mean Unstream is the Nocturne god, so <laughs> I think I think he's a strong invader into someone like Kale because you can spell shield her uh blow. Yeah, her blow and then um just kinda all in her. Yeah, he has a he actually has pretty good dueling potential, especially if uh you can catch him by surprise. Like uh if they can't get the CAP or E tether, then you just win the fight. Alright. Uh are there any more questions from Twitch chat? Because we're about to wrap it up, if not. <laughs> Alright, well, thank cool. you everybody for joining us and watching this episode of State of the League. Uh, I want to do a very special thank you to Unstream and Grace Gambit for joining me today, or us today. It was very pleasurable to have you on. <laughs> uh, do you have any final words for everybody listening? I mean, just uh, thanks for having me, and uh, I hope to keep up doing very cool things in the rec league. Honestly. All right, and on stream. Yeah, it's it's great to be here. I love playing with everyone and playing against everyone. Uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun. All right, thank you very much, and Zabel, thank you for hosting with me once again. Yes. Hearing your insight on the jungle was absolutely amazing, and I'm <laughs> looking forward to purchasing a copy of your book. <laughs> I'll have one in the mail shortly. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, to everybody out there listening, remember to like, su like, subscribe, and follow the Rec League on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, all that jazz. Please tune in on Sunday for 4 o'clock for our games, and they're going to be going till 10 o'clock. So if you have nothing to do Sunday afternoon, watch all these fabulous players play. <laughs> And with that, we're just going to wish everybody a very nice good night and see you on Sunday. <laughs>